and welcome to First Chapter Friday. This week I'm going to read from Wink by Rob Harrell. This is off of the brand new 2021 Texas Lone Star reading list, which always has the best books on it, so I'm very excited for a new list. And this story follows a middle school kiddo who is, he just wants to be normal. He just wants to fly under the radar, but that's just not meant to be for him. He is needing to survive middle school, and on top of that, he's needing to survive cancer, and he is learning to embrace all of life and the weirdness that life sometimes throws at you. So it's been described as hilarious and heart-wrenching. And let's see what we think of the first chapter. Chapter one, let's get radioactive. I'm lying on a steel table, all too aware of the giant ray gun pointed in my direction. It looks like one of these room-sized five-ton laser things that supervillains use in movies, the kind they threaten to destroy the planet with. What music are you into, Ross? I'm pretty sure the radiation tech is trying to distract me as he bolts me down. A hard plastic mesh mask over my neck and head holds me still. They molded it to my face yesterday and the tech struggles to click it onto the table. He scrunches his nose, pushing. Oh, anything, whatever, I mumble through my teeth. The hardened mask doesn't let my chin move much. The headpiece locks in, and the tech, Frank, gives my shoulder a bump with his fist. Come on, man. If you're going to lie here for half an hour, you need some tunes. I've got all kinds. Name something you like. There are no wrong answers. I scan my brain. You could, can you just, KZAQ? Frank stops and doubles over at the waist like he's been gut punched. He hangs there, talking to the floor. Okay, no wrong answers but that one. He straightens up and winces at me. Seriously? You like that top 40 garbage? It's what my parents have on all the time. So dorky. I try to look away casually, but my head won't budge. Frank stares before letting out an exaggerated sigh. <sighs> Fine. But tomorrow, tell me what you like, not what mom and dad like. He walks over and fiddles with an old-timey boombox on a high wall shelf next to a teetering stack of CDs and cassette tapes. Seriously? There must be a gazillion dollars worth of equipment in here and they can't afford an MP3 player? I notice a bit of a tattoo peeking out from the arm of Frank Scrubs. A lizard tail, maybe? Or a tentacle? Beyonce fills the room, and suddenly Frank is all business. I know we went over this yesterday, but let's review. He wraps his arms around his clipboard and begins, like he's done this a thousand times. The gurney you're on is going to lift you up and move you into place. The treatment takes 25 minutes or so. Keep your limbs and knotty bits inside the ride at all times. Do not throw things at the radiation techs. Do not feed the radiation techs. Do not waggle your legs around like a synchronized swimmer. Do not pass go. Do not hum the Goo Goo Dolls, as I despise the Goo Goo Dolls. Frank steps aside to let another tech, Callie, I think, reach in and mold some blue clay over the bridge of my nose. She smiles at me and tells me it's to protect my good eye from the beam. Then she pats my chest. I hope I don't look as nervous as I feel because I feel like a rabbit in a trap. My face is hot. Okay, now for the important part. Frank is back. When I tell you, you're gonna stare at the red X above you, the one we made over there by the big zapper yesterday. You'll see it when the machine slides over you. The mask prevents much of a nod, but he seems to catch it. Don't move your eye off that X or your eye will explode into a million pieces like the Death Star, okay? I let out a little grunt. Frank puts his hand on my arm. I'm kidding, Ross. I mean, kind of. Don't look away from the X. Your eye won't explode, but we're dealing with your vision. Important stuff. So keep your eye on the X or it could... 
Just keep your eye on the X and you'll be fine. Callie steps back in with a U-shaped attachment that looks like part of a kid's car seat. She fits it over my face and helps me slip the molded mouthpiece into my mouth. My teeth lock into it when I bite down and she snaps the ends of the U to the table. Ka-chunk. The table is attached to a huge mechanical arm like something out of Star Trek. My nose itches. I couldn't move my head if I had to. And something about that makes me all squirmy inside. I feel like a bug on a dissecting table. Frank and Callie look down at me. You good? Callie squeezes one of my sock covered toes. Need a blanket? Naga. Okay. She tucks a lock of hair behind her ear and gives me a friendly smile. Everybody smiles a lot here. Probably because they can tell I'm freaking out. We'll be right around the corner. You'll do great. Frank winks. No sweat, you'll see. They walk off to my left, but I can't turn my head to follow them. The lights dim slowly as Gwen Stefani starts singing about bananas. B-A-N-A-N-I-S. I'll admit it. It's a little freaky being the one in here with all this machinery. All this stuff. I close my eyes and let out a long breath. It shudders as it slowly comes out, which somehow takes my nerves up another notch. All right, Frank's voice squawks through a tinny speaker. We're going to get started. Ross, just relax and keep your eye on the red X. You're about to go for a ride. After a few seconds of silence, there are loud bangs and a revving sound. The entire room full of heavy machinery comes to life with beeping and whirring that might be big fans powering up. Maybe things heat up when radiation gets going? I have no idea. Then the gurney shudders and I began to rise. Frank comes through the speaker again. Houston, we have liftoff. Bat Pig Comics, Bat Pig versus the Radioactive Zapper. Poor Bat Pig, our hero is strapped down. A giant zapper pointed at his bat skull. One zap could blast off his ever-loving face. He needs to act super fast. Suddenly, Bat Pig uses his super strength to just break a strap. First, he turns the zapper on itself and blasts it big time. Then he captures the evil doctor and gives him a super noogie. Justice has prevailed, and Bat Pig goes for a nice sandwich. So that was the first chapter of Wink. So Ross has a very rare eye cancer, and he's having his first treatment here. And as a little piece of trivia, this book was based on the author's life. So he writes from experience. I hope you enjoy it. This can be found at your school libraries, your public libraries on Sora. Um, with it being on one of the Texas Lone Star lists, it should be fairly easy to locate, or you can always buy it yourself. Happy reading. <laughs>